Hello everybody, this is Mars Marshall, producer of Eve of October. This tutorial is to show you how to rig your own character models uh, through Anime Studio 5. Let's go ahead and get started. For starters, we go into Photoshop. And as you can see, I have my uh, mech robot that, uh, that I've already drawn. And we're going to start by creating segment files. So the image is there. I made a cut of one of the objects in my image. Each image is saved as a PNG file. And then you can see as I'm creating each image that I'm deleting the white background so that you have your transparency around the image. This one I'm saving as uh, the rocket pack for the mech. PNG file is the only way to have an image with a vacant uh, area around it and uh, you can see right here I'm cutting another image of the siren that goes on the mech you see that it's got that blank space around it and I'm saving that image as a separate object and basically I'm going through each image that I've created and saving it as an individual file, an individual PNG object. And basically you just keep doing this till you have an, an image object for each component that you're going to use. Once you have all your images saved up, all your separate components, you move into Anime Studio Pro. I'm using 5. There's uh, much more recent versions since I bought this, but f should be about the same. And what we need to do next is basically bring the images into Anime Studio. And you're going to find that over on your right toolbar under what's called new layer. Under new layer you're going to see new layer image. That's what we're going to click on and add each of the, Im the components that we just created. The first image that I brought in is the torso. You'll notice that the image is much bigger than the camera view. And that's because I've scanned these images at a really high resolution. If you use low resolution images, it's going to show up with all kinds of fuzziness around the outside edges and this sort of thing during the actual production. Uh, there I've imported the upper arm, uh, the head, the uh, lower right arm upper left arm and your lower left arm hips lower upper right leg Next one's going to be lower right leg and, oops, sorry, lower left leg. And you just basically keep going till you have each component in there. And you're going to have to do a little bit of arranging. Everything on the top of your stack is going to be in the foreground. Everything uh, below that's going to be in the background so you're gonna have to shift your layers up and down in your stack and try to find out what works best usually I work with uh, the arm that's gonna be crossing over the torso and stuff like that usually the arm is gonna be up front the head is gonna be up front the torso usually in the very back or the bottom of the stack and uh, 
depending on how the, the character is going to be used during the scene, you may adjust those uh, things in your stack so that they're appropriately in the front or the back. At this point, you're going to be making small adjustments to put your components where they belong. There, I'm moving the upper left hand arm up by the torso, adjusting it, putting it behind the torso in the layer stack, dropping it below. Moving the lower left arm, and I want that joint to be overlapping the other one, so I put that above the arm in the stack. And let's see, I'll adjust the, let's see what we're going to do here. Oh yeah, moving the arm over the torso. Before it was behind the torso, now it's above the torso, so on top of the torso in the stack. Like I said, uh, you can spend a lot of time making sure that everything lines up perfectly. You want the joints to bend exactly where they need to be. Okay, and this head I made really high resolution, so I'm resizing it to fit the mech. Adjusting it over the neck area. So you can see there's a lot of adjust adjusting that you need to do to get everything set up just right before you start rigging the bones. Okay, once you're satisfied with how all the components are arranged together, we're going to go ahead and move into the create layer bone. Uh, same toolbar on the right. And we're going to start by creating the first bone layer and all the components are going to be loaded up. Basically, this is the base file for your skeleton. One thing to note, make sure you're on frame zero. A lot of times you, messing around you end up putting it on frame one or frame two, frame three, something like that and it causes all kinds of problems. Everything that you do when you're creating bones is done in frame zero. So let's go ahead and show how that looks. In this uh, view here, you'll see that I have the bone created at the very top layer, and I have all my images arranged. And here, let's move the bone up to the very top. Bam, like so. Now I'm going to move each image that I've just arranged into the bone. You'll notice that I'm dragging everything from the bottom and up to the top and dropping it into the bone uh, layer and uh, you always draw from the bottom and that way it keeps all your arrangements exactly as they should be so just make sure you're pulling and dropping from the bottom next we'll go over to the tools and this is where we're actually going to create the bones and we're going to start forming up the skeleton and the tool you're going to be selecting is Create Bone. Before we go into actually creating the bones, I'm going to give you an idea basically how I start laying out the bones for my rig. Now one thing you'll notice after experimenting a little bit, once you've clicked to create, create Bone, it's already in that mode. So every time you click and draw it, you actually produce a bone. The next bone you you draw will be connected to that bone. You draw it out to the size and to the position where your next bend is going to be and you know you just continue on. Eventually there's going to be a little bit more involved into making sure that the bones bend as they should where they should. But for starters let's go ahead and go over the way I generally set it up or the first approach. Okay, next we're going to go into the little schematic I've created to show you how I put this together. We're going to start with the hips, then we're going to move to the torso, then to the head, then we're going to go to the right upper arm, right lower arm, then we're going to go to the left upper arm, 
left lower arm. Then we're going to go to the upper right leg, to the lower right leg, and to the upper left leg, and lower left leg. So let's start creating our bones. I'll show you in application how this is done. I got my image here. I've drawn a bone up to the middle of the torso, up to the neck, to the top of the head, from the shoulder of the arm to the elbow. Then I've drawn the bone out to there, to the joints, from the hips to the knee, stretch it out for the leg, and same on the other side. Unfortunately, we're not exactly finished because if you start moving the bones around as they are right now, you're going to find out nothing bends as it should. So what we need to do is we need to make some adjustments to our skeleton. You have select bone and parent bone. Those are going to be in your lower left hand toolbar. Basically a quick description. Select bone, of course, is to pick the bone that you're going to make adjustments to. And parent bone, basically, it's, I kind of think of it as where you create hinges where things bend, which bones bend from what other bones. And uh, the first one that you click on is the parent bone. And the bone that's connected that to that would be called the child bone. Now, if you followed uh, the schematic that I had, you're going to have a majority of your bones already parented pretty much where they need to be. There's only going to be a few adjustments. You're going to redirect uh, one connection from the arms to the shoulders and from the legs to the hips. These are just minor changes to make everything work as it should. I'm going to go ahead and show you the application. Give me a second. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and select the upper shoulder bone and I'm going to parent that to the torso, the other side to the torso, since that's where it's bending from, the lower leg upper bone to the hip, and the other side upper bone to the hip. Now the bone should be highlighted in red pretty much like a stick man. You're going to make uh, a couple little tests there to make sure that it's moving as it should. And to do your test, you're going to be using the tool called Manipulate Bone. And you're going to be checking all the bends to make sure that they bend at the joints. There's a couple tools over there to show you to move the bones around. Next, you're going to want to bind uh, the images to the bones. Each bone will be bound to the image that it represents. I'm going to give you a quick example of that. Here's an example of what the bones do when they're not bound to the image. You see it's all twisted, contorted, doesn't look right. Sometimes that might be the effect you want, but for this example it's not going to work. So we'll start by binding the uh, left arm to the left arm, lower arm bone. Then you click on the, see, bound to the bone. Go to the head, bind it to the image of the head, the torso, to the torso bone, and the arm bone, to the upper arm bone. And if it's done correctly, this is uh, exactly what you should get. But remember, it's just like putting the glove on a hand. If, if you bind an image to a, that bone, that's the, the, the image belongs to that bone. So when that bone moves, that's the only thing that's going to move. And that's the end of the tutorial. Go ahead and take time to check out Eve of October and subscribe to my channel. And I hope you find this useful. Bye.